If you've not run to my channel before, you've probably had a hard time finding out the performance needs of ultrawide and super ultrawide resolutions. And you've probably resorted to some of the bad math being bandied about on places like Reddit, where they tell you to just take the difference in resolution and divide them by each other to get the difference in performance. Well, double the resolution does not mean you need double the GPU horsepower. There are just too many factors that can bottleneck a game's performance that sometimes the resolution it's played at is nearly irrelevant. Thank God I got a 4090 to play this at 4K. If you want to know what the real performance difference is, you're in the right place. I've tested seven GPUs from AMD and NVIDIA across 15 games to find out what the true performance gap is. First, let's look at the test system I'm using. If you want to take this all in, pause the video now. Otherwise, let's get on to those performance results. We will start with what you really want, and that's the average. These 15 games have been tested at ultra settings with ray tracing on where available. First, we will look at the average performance for each GPU running at 2560 by 1440p QHD resolution. At this resolution, we see all GPUs except the old RTX 2080 comfortably clear 60fps, with most crossing the blue line into high refresh rate territory. When we turn up the resolution two times to a super ultra wide 5120 by 1440p, this resolution results in an FPS contraction that drops the RTX 4070 below 60 FPS, but leaves all the other GPUs with smooth refresh rates, with the RTX 4090 still getting high refresh rates. If moving up in resolution to the super ultrawide actually resulted in only half the performance that you would get at the standard QHD resolution, then only the 700 XTX 4080 and 4090 would be able to squeak past the 60 FPS line. Luckily, a 50% drop in performance isn't what actually happens, and the 4090 sees less than a 25% drop in performance, and all the other GPUs see less than a 37.5% drop in performance. This significantly shifts the landscape of what GPU you would need to upgrade to to maintain the same FPS in your games. If we really were losing half of our performance, as represented by the dark gray bars, not even a 4090 could match the performance of a 4070, running QHD resolution. You would have to wait for the 5090 to launch so you can maintain the same FPS. But in reality, a 4080 matches the performance no problem. So if you're jumping from a 16x9 1440p monitor to a 32x9 1440p monitor, you only need a two tier upgrade on your GPU to not lose FPS, rather than the four tiers you may have been led to believe. But this is just the average. What about individual games? Do ray tracing games hit the GPUs harder than raster games? What is the worst case scenario? Or maybe your forever game is just needs a single GPU tier upgrade and you're lucking out. Well, we're gonna take a deep dive into six games and then I'll show all the other nine so you can get a full picture of what's happening in each game. Let's start with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, played on its extreme settings. As you can see, the QHD results are putting up some impressive FPS with all GPUs clearing 60 and some approaching extreme refresh rates. But even at double the resolution, the Super Ultralight is still delivering some fine frame rate with only the old 2080 not clearing 60 and the 4070 being the only modern GPU not in high refresh rates. And as you can see here, all GPUs are significantly outperforming the resolution differential. And there are a few places where a single GPU tier upgrade is all you need to maintain your FPS when doubling your resolution. And even worse case, you need only a two tier upgrade, which will result in a healthy bump in FPS. If you're a Call of Duty player, then upgrading your resolution is a much less daunting task than you probably thought it would be. Looking at another extremely popular game, we have Fortnite played with all the bells and whistles on. This means Nanite and Lumen hardware ray tracing are used. At these extreme settings, we see even the QHD resolution, only the 7900 XTX and 4090 managed 60 FPS performance, with the rest landing between 30 and 60 FPS. Moving up to the super ultrawide resolution, we see a moderate drop in performance, where now every GPU is performing below 60 FPS. But when compared to the 50% performance drop that may have been expected, we see a much friendlier picture, with all GPUs except the old 2080 taking less than a 25% performance hit from the resolution bump. In many cases, only a single GPU tier upgrade is needed to maintain performance. While these are not the settings one would use to stay competitive, it keeps the stronger GPUs from being CPU bottlenecked at both resolutions, allowing us to actually see the scaling. Next is Cyberpunk 2077 with ultra ray tracing on. 
it is probably the worst case scenario performance hit for going up in resolution. Here the QHD performance results show the 4090 is the only card that can clear 60 FPS without the aid of upscaling. And when the resolution is doubled on the Super Altwide, we see significant performance drops. The cards with stronger ray tracing manage to keep their heads above water, with the 4090 seeing a pretty decent result. But the fewer RT cores a card has, the closer it is to 50%, and even sub 50% if you also run out of VRAM. Cyberpunk ray tracing implementation seems to be the most sensitive to resolution of any that I have tested. Even other games like Fortnite and Forza Motorsport that have significant ray tracing don't exhibit such extreme scaling. Even with such a harsh scaling environment, we still see a 2 GPU tier upgrade will mostly maintain your FPS, with the worst showing being 3 tiers, and the best a single tier. Next up is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, with all of its ray tracing turned on. Here at the QHD resolution we have most of the GPUs able to clear 60 FPS, while when we double the resolution to the super ultrawide, the 4090 is the only card to remain above 60 FPS. Despite a relatively steep scaling penalty on most cards, your upgrade needs are still limited to just two tiers to match performance. Next is Forza Motorsport, which is played using the full ray tracing option. At the QHD resolution, the upper half of the GPUs are able to maintain a 60 FPS average. When we double up the resolution to the Super Altwide, we see a game that isn't affected much by resolution despite only two cards being able to maintain that 60 FPS average, and for the most part a single GPU tier upgrade would be enough to compensate for the performance difference between resolutions. And the last of our deep dives is Starfield. Like Modern Warfare 3, this game has no ray tracing, and sees some high refresh rates at the QHD resolution and even doubling the resolution to that of the Super Altwide has most modern GPUs still above 60 FPS, with the resolution performance scaling in a healthy state, with at least on the Nvidia side, a one tier GPU upgrade more or less compensating for the increase in resolution. On the AMD side, both the XT and XTX would need to step up to the 4090 to maintain the QHD levels of performance at the Super Altwide resolutions. Now I will put the results for the remaining 9 games on screen for a second each. You can pause the video if you see a game that is important to you. As you can see, what would seem like the bleak prospect of doubling your resolution and then needing to double your GPU horsepower isn't actually that bad in reality. This situation is much better. If we just look at the modern GPUs, what would be a theoretical need for a 4 tier GPU upgrade is more like an actual need for a 2 tier upgrade. Even in a ray tracing hellscape like Cyberpunk 2077 offers, a 2 tier GPU will leave you lacking in some places, but it will be enough to cover it in others. And a 3 tier GPU upgrade would leave you in a better place across the board than you were when you were at QHD resolution. Just a piece of advice for anyone looking to start your super ultra-wide journey. I would set the 4070 Ti Super as the entry point GPU for this resolution. It avoids any of the stuttering that you can see on cards with less than 16 gigabytes of memory. Even 12 gigabyte cards can get some VRAM stutter in some games that use up a lot of memory. And sometimes DLSS cannot reduce the VRAM enough to avoid these situations. And starting with a 4070 Ti Super will ensure that you have at least a 60 FPS average across all these games. And that's even before digging into the DLSS and FSR toolkits that should keep you happily playing above 60 FPS for the next several years. Thanks for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos that come out. And you can check out one of these two videos here to check out some other resolution comparisons. If you want to help this channel out, I have affiliate links in the description if you want to buy any of these GPUs off Amazon. And my Patreon link is down there too. I'm Scott, and I'll see you next time, Altwide fans.